this is a big challenge for, for any secret intelligence agency, especially for the NSA, especially in a world in which everything is computerized and there in the networks. So one of the ways to build trust more is to have more transparency. And one of the things that the NSA has learned is that this secret system of checks and balances is not enough. Another thing we've learned from the Snowden revelation is that the NSA wasn't very good at explaining itself. Even when it had a good story to tell, it was, didn't have any training in public explanation, and it was very shy about talking. It's in, their, it's in their DNA not to talk publicly about what they do. And I think that ultimately the intelligence communities in the United States are changing quite a lot, especially on this front. There's much more disclosure, especially about the legal basis, especially about what programs are happening, what's going on at the programmatic level as opposed to the detailed level. There's a lot more transparency that the intelligence community on its own, not forced by courts, have been, uh, they've been being much more transparent. And this is because they realized that secret checks and balances in secret are not enough. That programs that they thought were legitimized and approved by all three branches of government when disclosed to the public, were, there was not as much confidence as they, as they expected there would be. They understand also that in the digitalized world, just as they can get at more secrets than before, their secrets can be gotten at. So they realize that they're not going to be able to main, maintain transparency as much. So you can see one consequence of Snowden uh, that I think is a happy consequence from the perspective of the U.S. government is there's going to be more transparency in the intelligence community. They realize they have the balance wrong. They realize they have to be better at explaining themselves. Ultimately, I think that their actions are going to be more legitimate and ultimately, I think that's going to enable us, the United States, to empower these agencies to do more in these networks to keep us safe. So the irony, or one of the ironies of the Snowden revelations is that it might lead the U.S. government to reform itself in ways that will allow it to do more work inside the network of the type that Snowden didn't like. But it turns on this issue of public trust. And yes. you speak about a cultural change uh, and internal processes that reflect that cultural change, but some countries have opted for external review mechanisms of security agencies. So the, the opportunity to uh, collect in intelligence is, is accepted, but they're, they're just to ensure there's no excess, some have... What do you mean by external review? So in countries such as our own in Australia, there was appointed a period of, for a period of time a, um, a, like an ombudsman uh, who would oversee for a, period, for a set period of time the, the running of security agencies, a, a, a person who would represent public interest more formally than just relying on cultural change. Is that something that... This is something the United States has a lot of already. I mean, they're, uh, they're, um, we have an inspector general who is really an independent agency inside of each intelligence community. We have various privacy and civil liberties board. We have various entities inside the executive branch. There's talk about it, adding an adversarial interest to the FISA court process. Um, I mean, I would say that I'm quite confident that in terms of independent checks on what's going on, there are more in the U.S. system than anywhere else in the world. But by independent, I don't mean public. So these are independent checks in secret, outside of the executive branch or in the executive branch, but detached from the usual operation. We have a lot of that, and I think it's worked pretty well on balance. But so the problem is not independent checks, the problem is secrecy versus transparency. And I don't think we need more independent checks. In fact, we're reaching the point where they're becoming arguably counterproductive. There's so many voices, so many veto points, so many second guessing. The National Security Agency, if you talk to someone who does SIGINT on down in the bowels of the NSA, they will tell you that they do 80 hours a year of training, that they've got all sorts of extremely elaborate rules of what they can and can't do and that this stuff gets in the way of their mission even though they comply with it, they do it. And so independent checks and other le more levels of scrutiny, I think, are less the answer than bringing these levels of scrutiny to the public. And that's a hard trade-off because there's no doubt that what the NSA has revealed, but what Snowden revealed and what the NSA revealed on its own has to some extent harmed collection efforts. I just have zero doubt about that. It has to be the case. Uh, on the other hand, it, there's a trade-off, though, and the trade-off is you give up a little bit on the means and methods of collection and on being able to act in secret to trick the adversary. You give up a little bit of that in exchange for more public trust. And finding that balance is hard and it's contextual, and it also involves not just getting the balance right but explaining it well. 
and we're working through that now. But I'm pretty confident that the end of that process is going to result in a more robust and more legitimate national security agency because of the security needs that they're going to be addressing that ultimately is what people really care about.